Halo's Warthog is one of the most iconic rides in gaming. From the first glimpses of Halo Combat Evolved in 1999 to Halo Infinite's teaser in 2018, the Warthog has always been at Master Chief's side, ready to peel out on its all-wheel drive chassis to mow down the Covenant. Even in the earliest design stages of Halo Combat Evolved, vehicles played an important role in balancing the gameplay. At the center of this vehicular realm stood the M12 Force Application Vehicle, better known as the Warthog. It has stood strong as Halo's most fun and effective vehicle, filled with Marines or fellow Spartans, since the very first glimpses the public had of the Halo universe. On July 21, 1999, Steve Jobs first announced Halo to the public with great reception and an impressive video demo for the time. When we were working on Halo, it was actually the first time that we were developing a game first on Windows. And people don't know that because Steve Jobs got up at Macworld and showed off Halo for the first time and said, and it's being developed on, you know, first for the Mac. It actually wasn't true. We had to scramble to do a Mac port of the game at the last minute before that Macworld conference. And this is the first time anybody has ever seen it. It's the first time they've debuted it. This was a time where a big, expansive environments weren't seen too often, certainly in sort of the shooter space, which had been very corridor-focused for a long time. If you remember the demo, it started off indoors, pretty typical, but right in the middle of the demo, we took you outside in that moment of transition, and the camera panned up to show you the sun and the vista. And I think at that point, everybody who was watching and afterwards realized, wait, this is a step change in what we expect from from a typical shooter. The 1999 Macworld video demo was impressive, but it was just that, a video. After a second updated cinematic trailer at E3 in 2000, Bungie debuted its first playable demo at GameStock in 2001. It assumed the more recognizable first-person style Halo was known for and appeared to be controlled in real time by Bungie veteran Joseph Staten. In the demo, a banshee flies down the coastline and lands next to a lone warthog. Chief then hops in the hog and barrels down a sandy beach with a trusty marine manning the turret. A large portion of the demo's gameplay was focused on driving the hog through the expansive landscape. From the outset, Bungie knew how fun driving the warthog felt, and they were quick to establish it as a cornerstone of the Halo experience. In the full release of Halo Combat Evolved, you first encounter the warthog after crash landing on a mysterious ring-shaped planet. After a few skirmishes with a Covenant, a Pelican comes to your aid and drops an M12 Light Recon Warthog at your feet. After a brief controls prompt, you're free to embark across the open landscape and into the ancient Forerunner structures. Just something as simple as driving the Warthog on D30, which was fun. That was a defining game experience. The focus on vehicles wasn't present in a lot of the shooters of the time. And this original gameplay style was one of many reasons for the success of Halo with the launch of the original Xbox. Let me now unveil Xbox. Five, four, three, two, so when we're looking at kind of forecasts and how the marketing team and the sales team thought games would sell, Halo was somewhere down on the list. It was pretty bleak. I mean, people weren't sure it was going to make it. Frame rate was bad. Shooters, are they really going to work on console? But it, it definitely became the hallmark of the original Xbox. Eighteen years later, the Warthog is still a staple of Halo, having been featured in over a dozen games, gone through numerous variations, and changed hands to 343 Industries. With so many different versions, the Warthog has somehow managed to maintain its core features and unique handling style. The most recognizable M12 variant, the Light Reconnaissance Vehicle, houses the iconic light anti-aircraft chain gun that tears through enemy ghosts and makes short work of light infantry. With a top speed of 78 miles per hour, the M12 Light Recon Hog is highly maneuverable with flexible suspension, making it the ideal transportation choice for Marines off-roading the Halo's uncharted lands. Able to be fueled by just water or in emergencies, urine, the adaptability and effectiveness of the Hog make it the UNSC's number one choice for small arms defense and ground transportation. We are the most crazy scripting 
crack smoking. This would be so cool, damn the frame rate. Let's pound the code and make these crazy things happen. Oh, no. Woohoo! E3 demo from start to finish. This is our audio playground, which has evolved greatly since the last time. We now have virtually every surface in the game in these large rooms that allow us to kind of mess around and do what we want. If I turn on one more debug thing here, it'll actually show us how just how many voices are in use for an event like this. So the screen is filled with the amount of sound calls we're getting. And what this is telling us right here is that we have about 17 or 18 voices in use when this chain gun is firing. And we can have 64 unique things happening in, in surround sound space at a time. So we're in good shape, I think. Now ask me again in two months and, and when I'm bloodshot eyes and I haven't bathed in three days and I'll probably tell you something different. Each game in the series has managed to build on the original design from Halo CE, and almost countless versions have spawned throughout the years. Some of these include the M12 G1 Goss Hog, the M12 A1 and M12 R Rocket Hogs, the M831 Troop Transport Hog, and the Rally, Woodland, Tundra, Core, Urban, Oni, and sword-skinned M12 B Hogs. Today, Halo 5's requisition packs contain numerous skins and versions of the Hog, but the M12 Light Recon vehicle has stood the test of time with its classic design and effective turret. Though the hands riding the code have changed, the numerous developers at Bungie and 343 who've carefully modified the Hog in each Halo game have all shared a love for Chief's vehicle of choice. Hey Jason, explain to me why human beings would make a, a Jeep that big. I mean, look how big that is compared to Sergeant Johnson. Because it looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that the Warthog actually had like an internal like dash lights and crap. And so then like I'm flying around and I'm like, wait, what? Like there's actually like lights in here? No tires. Yeah. Because it is right. the snow hog. It, it is the snow hog. It has chains. No tires. It does not have chains. It does well, not. But it, oh, sorry. <laughs> but it does. No matter the battlefield, the Warthog enables team play a deadly stream of bullets, and tactical insertions into enemy territory. Driving the hog is just as fun as manning the turret, and any Halo fan could attest to the satisfaction of earning one of multiplayer's best medals, the Wheelman. The impact of the Warthog on culture does not stop in the gaming realm. Studios and fans alike have crafted their own versions of the Hog with impressive accuracy. In 2007, Bungie, along with Neil Blomkamp and Weta Digital, produced a series of live-action shorts released as promotional material for Halo 3. These parties were also slated to create a live-action Halo movie produced by Peter Jackson, but the movie never came to be, falling apart in the developmental process. Jackson and Blumkamp famously created the successful sci-fi movie District 9 in its place. I'm just so much looking forward to being part of this experience of making the Halo film. We'll be using all of our state-of-the-art facilities at Weta Digital and Weta Workshop down here in New Zealand and helping to guide this film through to what I hope will be a really incredible, memorable cinematic experience. The three promotional shorts were released separately and eventually combined into one, titled Halo Landfall. The short film features a fully functional warthog built by Weta Workshops, the prop makers and special effects artists for movies like Lord of the Rings, iRobot, and Mad Max Fury Road. Weta's warthog boasted four-wheel drive, a rotating chain gun, and working airbags. During Bungie's promotion of Halo 3, they toured the hog in various locations and famously crashed it on a parking lot test drive. Yes. <laughs> the impressive size and iconic design are too tempting for some fans to ignore. Inspired by Weta's near-perfect replica, several fans have created their own versions of street-legal warthogs. I'm the owner and builder of the replica of the Warthog from Halo. I've built this thing from the ground up completely solo on my own. Five and a half years of labor, thousands of man hours. 
thousands of dollars and the few times I've nearly killed myself in the process of building it. <laughs> Master Chief's design has permeated our culture and become common imagery in the mainstream media. Following closely behind, the Warthog has remained at Chief's side as he's fought the Covenant, Flood, and Prometheans in heroic defense of humanity. No other vehicle in gaming provides players with the style and fun that the Hog brings, and despite many variations and changes over the years, it has remained the same beast, ready for multi-kill or a clutch teammate extraction and capture the flag. Having crossed the boundary from gaming into real life, the Warthog has also jumped into other gaming properties, including Forza Motorsport and Horizon. From the earliest years of Halo's development at Bungie, the Warthog has been a key pillar of Halo's iconic gameplay and design, and 343 Industries has continued this tradition in this summer's teaser for Halo Infinite. In the most impressive shot of the teaser, Chief barrels across the landscape in his M12 Force application vehicle and reminds us that we can always count on driving the Warthog in our favorite games to come. Let's see. 